Dying, He loved me. Dying, He saved me. Buried, He carried my sins far away. Rising, He justified. Good morning. Good morning. It's so great to see you again. I don't know if my mic's on or not. Can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. I have a big problem anyway. It's not on. It's not on? No, it's not on. No, it's not on. It's not on. I think so. Is it green? Is it green? Is it you want me to wait for you to... Hooray! Let me go check. Awesome. So your first name is Dan. Dan. We haven't met before, right? Uh, last two years. No. Okay. Yeah. Beard is new. Uh, new and temporary. New and temporary. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good on you. Uh, when when I looked over at you, uh, I saw this adventurous spirit on you. And. Uh, <clears throat> And then I heard God say, you're going to write songs, and in, 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 in his book, I heard the title would be, Songs from the Pilgrimage. And uh, I, did, I just, I just, <laughs> I, 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 you know, um, I, I, just, I just see that, you know, that God's taking you on a journey. And, and, and it's kind of like God healing <coughs> scales from your eyes, like, like with Paul. And, and, and there's a level that you have of understanding. God's going to bring you to a deeper level and a deeper and a deeper level. So God's going to be peeling back the layers. And the depth of the journey that you're on is going to just be intensified. And you're going to, and you're going to have a tremendous impact more than you've ever had in your life. Amen. Good morning again. Good morning. Uh, and I was, uh, I was sitting here and I was thinking about the purity. When you go to uh, Plymouth, Massachusetts, and you go to downtown, where the, the, the two churches are right next to each other, there was a the division, unfortunately, in the church. And they, the second church was planted with like 25 people in the first church. But um, on their plaque on the outside, it says Meeting House. Because the, the Puritans and the Pilgrims, they didn't call themselves churches, they called themselves Meeting Houses. Because they wanted to meet with God. And I'm just so delighted that I could meet with God with you this morning. Uh, because every time I, I, I see you, every time I see you, I just see all the wonderful things God has done and wants to do. You guys are amazing. I, I, I'm going to say, you're, you're, you're amazing. I see the young, young dog back with burgundy and black vest. You have the spirit of worship all over you. You just love to worship. And God delights in your worship. I'm telling you, you worship, there's a special connection that you have with the Lord. And, and there's this is delight that it has. I would encourage you to, in your home, to, to worship and have a piece of paper uh, nearby with a pen and begin writing down the thoughts you get, because I believe God speaks to you really clearly in worship. And it's a, you know, you gotta hear this. God thinks you're funny. I, I mean, that's, I don't know if you kind of have a sense of humor or not, but do you have a sense of humor? My life. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, and, yeah, it's, and then I just heard God say he thinks you're funny. And uh, see, you might not think it's funny, but God thinks it's funny. <laughs> you know, there was a, a, the gentleman that did the reading, and there was a gentleman sitting next to him. Could you tell that gentleman that God's after him? The, one, the guy that not did the reading, but the other, other person that was here, you were sitting here? Or yeah. oh, sitting with you or whatever? Yeah. No, there was somebody that, that was, I don't know. Right, yeah. You just tell him God's after him. All right? God's about ready to change his life. I like that. Sir? He had a call. He had to go to the Oh, that's okay. He wanted to sing a worship. 
that's, that's, you know, I, I have, this happens a lot. People have to go to work, and I'm, I'm not offended or hurt. Or, and, but just sometimes, uh, I get one of my, maybe my second prophetic word, I was at a meeting and I had to go to work, like this guy did. And a guy like me stood up and said, you tell that young, young man this word. And so I get that word, that word changed my life. And I believe what I just said is going to change his life. Uh, the reading from Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, says this. The people who know their God. The people who know their God shall be strong. That's you. Joel says, let the weak say they are strong. So, so often, don't we all feel frail and weak? And, and the enemy really causes us to, to walk around feeling frail and weak and discouraged. But we need to declare that the weak say we are strong. The devil, you know, I don't know, I, I deal with depression once in a while. I mean, I deal with discouragement once in a while. So I have to, you know what I do instead of allowing that to, to infuse in my spirit, I, I literally, you know what I do? I walk around my office. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm strange, but I walk around the office and I, I, I said, Lord, your word says this. And I begin declaring what the word of God says. I begin, I begin declaring who I am, not what I am. Let the weak say they are strong. So here's what God's saying to you. You can be strong. And then it says, the people who know their God, watch this, shall do, shall do great exploits. I interpret that as we're called to greatness. Can, can you, can you, somebody like you, this is my mirror. You all have a mirror with you? You're called to greatness. Can, can you say, I'm called for greatness? I'm called for greatness. You are called to greatness. See, for so long we have felt minimized and, and, and of insignificance. God never intended his sons and daughters to be insignificant. See, we have this thing that I call stolen identity. See, unfortunately, our identity for so long is not, not who I am, but it's what I do. For many years, my identity was I was a pastor. That's not my identity, that's my function. I function as a pastor, but it's not my identity. My identity is that I'm God's son. Amen. Remember when Jesus was in, 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 in the Gospels, when Jesus was baptized in the water, there was a voice from heaven that spoke. What did that voice say? Say it. Go ahead. So, you know, it's funny. We read the scripture and we, and we say, oh yeah, the voice from heaven said, this is my son. He didn't say, this is the Messiah. He didn't say, he's going to deliver the world. He said, this is my son. And you know what? I'm really pleased with him. And you need to hear that this morning. God's saying, this is my son. This is my daughter. You are someone that God is, thinks is precious. My identity, your identity, is your son and daughter of God. The people who know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. You're special. You're special. This is from Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5 from the Message Bible. Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. 
before you saw the light of day, I have holy plans for you. Not just ordinary plans, but holy plans. Before you took your first breath, God said, I knew you. You know what's staggering? Is when God saved me and he saved you, he knew all the stuff that we had done before Christ, all of our sins. Right? But even when he saved me, he knew my future sins. He knew, he knew all my failings, all the stupid things I do, all the terrible things I do. But in spite of him knowing my future, he still called me his son. And not only did he call me his son, but Paul says he put me in the ministry. You say, well, he put you in the ministry. No, he put all of you in the ministry. How many people believe they're in the ministry? Uh, you got a good group here. Because you're all in the ministry. And you're all ordained. Ordained simply means called by God. And you're all called by God. God has holy plans for you. And you know the word there is plural? Plans? Have you discovered that we all fail? Yep. My failures I have discovered are my launching pad to my tomorrow. So a lot of times when I used to fail, I, I used to, you know, literally just, like John Calvin, I would, I would beat myself up emotionally. And I would withdraw. And I was embarrassed, I was ashamed, I was disappointed in myself. And certainly the devil would, you know, agree with me all those three creatures. But one day I discovered that God was bigger than my sin. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? God's bigger than my sin. Oh, and by the way, you know, when you, when you say, Lord, I'm sorry, and then, and then a couple days later you go, God, I did this. God says, I have no idea what you're talking about. The, this is what it says, the, the scripture that God takes our sin and throws them in the sea of forgetfulness. I, I remember I was, um, one day I, I was praying and I was saying, you know, God, I'm sorry I did this the other day. I'm sorry I did that. I'm sorry I did that. And God says to me, Brian, I have no idea what you're talking about. Because God doesn't remember your sin. <sighs> How great is that? <clears throat> How freeing is that? God has plans for you. Awesome plans. This is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 2 through 6. Long before he laid down the earth's foundations, he had us in mind. He had settled on us as the focus of his love to be made whole and holy by his love. Long, long ago, he decided to adopt us into his family. What pleasure he took in planning this. How, can, can you feel that? God goes, long before the foundation of the world, I says, I've been thinking about you. And you and I are going to walk together. And I'm going to adopt you. I'm going to take you home. And you're going to be my son. You're going to be my daughter forever. In spite of all the stupidity that you're going to do. It says he took pleasure in, in planning this. He wanted us to enter into the celebration of his lavish gift given by the hand of his beloved son, Jesus. You guys are the most important people that are living on this planet. So you're not just ordinary people, you're extraordinary people. You're not just people, you're holy people. 
And not just people, you're priests of the Most High God. God's called you to change the world. God's called you to change the world. In, in John 20 and 21, Father Jim read this. So Jesus said to them, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. As the Father sent Jesus, he is now sending you. How many people feel like they're being sent by God every morning? Every, you know what? I, you do believe that. You do. You have the, you, I'm telling you, you have this tenacious spirit about you. You're, you are tenacious. You don't give up. And when you make your mind up, it's made up. But, yeah. yeah. But, but, this, but you have this deep affection for Jesus. I mean, really deep. Your convictions are strong. You're, you're a strong woman. And you know what? That's how God made you. And you don't have to apologize for that. But I'm telling you what, you're a very influential woman. When you speak, people listen. You <laughs> <laughs> we, won't, we won't touch that one. <laughs> See, we, we, we have adopted the attitude that we're ordinary. You are not ordinary. You're extraordinary. You're the, you are the most important, precious people on this planet. Now, a lot of times, you know, what we all think is, well, Pastor Brian, you have an anointing. You know, you're, you're special. You're different. Well, we'll just we'll eliminate that this morning. First John, chapter two and verse twenty. It says this. It says you have an anointing. Everyone sitting here this morning knows Jesus Christ. It says you have an anointing. I, I, you know, I have a lot of people come and say, well, Pastor, you pray for me, pray that God would give me an anointing. I said, I'm not going to pray that because you already have one. I see this wonderful black man in the back. I'll, I'll tell you what, the call of God is all over your life, sir. I, I mean, there's a, there's a there's anointings, but you, you have a special anointing to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And um, you, ever, you ever thought of doing mission work? Because I, there's a missionary spirit that's all over you. You know, and um, you're called to be a man of influence. I see you going to nations and preaching the gospel. And I'm telling you, I can, I, I can see you opening up the word of God. And people just sitting, listening to you. It says in Ezra, they, they stood up all day and they listened for hours as they would share the word of God. I can see that you could share the word of God and people would sit and listen to you for hours as truth comes out of you. How many people here believe they have an anointing? Well, if you don't believe it, you need to stop believing it because the Bible says you, you have one. One of the things that, that God's been speaking to me a lot lately, and we shared it yesterday briefly, was from Mark chapter 3. There's a man in the temple, he has a withered hand. Jesus comes into the temple, he sees the man with a withered hand, and you would think that Jesus would run up to the man with a withered hand and pray for him, right? Jesus didn't do that. He saw the man with a withered hand, and he said to the man with a withered hand, step forward. And, and the withered man stepped forward, and when he stepped forward, that's when Jesus healed him. Here's my word to you all. Step forward. Step forward. Oh, like, I can't do that. Yes, you can. 
You see, for too many of us have, for a long time, the I can't spirit. I can't do this, and I can't do that. Well, that, that's not what the Bible says. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13 says what? We all know it. Ephesians 4, 13 says what? Say it, go ahead. Okay, here's what the verse says. Here's what we know in God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's what we, isn't that how we usually say it? Well, I, you know what, and, and the thing is, but here's, here's what I have to say. I can do all things through Christ. See, we, we say I can do all things through Christ, but we don't believe it. The Greek there says that I can do all things that God requires of me. God's not requiring me to be a brain surgeon. You wouldn't want me playing with your brain. <laughs> but what God requires me to do, He'll enable me to do. So whatever God's requiring of you to do, He will enable you to do it. You have the I can spirit. Well, the children of Israel were were ready to go in the, into the promised land. The people were convinced by ten spies, we can't do this thing. And so they wandered for 40 years. The church of Jesus Christ, that I love dearly, has been wandering for many years now. And it's time to stop the wandering. Because we can do what God's calling us to do. I, I, I love Isaiah 60. It says, arise and shine. You know what the Hebrew there says? Get up and throw away and cast off your depression. Arise and shine? No. Get up and cast off your depression. Why? Because the light, the anointing, Jesus has come. Come in you. Come in you. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The glory of God, the anointing of God has risen on you. On you. It doesn't say coming on you, it's on you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. How about now? 2018, do you think we have darkness on the earth? Listen, I've been walking with Jesus since 1970. I can't believe where we are. I mean, the darkness that I've seen in my short lifetime, well, it's just incredible. It's dark out there. But it says this, But the Lord will arise over you, and His glory, watch this, will be seen on you. So as darkness covers the earth, God says, My glory will be seen on you. So when you walk in the supermarket, when you go to a friend's house, listen to me, they see the light on you. <clears throat> I've been, the last several years, so now I used to read that scripture and believe it, but you know how there are certain lights that have rheostats on them where you can turn them up? And you can dim them and turn them? So what I do, is I wake up in the morning, and literally turn up my, my rheostat. I, 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 I do, like, God, you've called me today to do something. Every, I wake up every day with expectation. Do you, did you come today with expectation? Like, what are you going to do, God? What, what are you going to do? I wake every day, every day I wake up and go, what are you going to do today? What are you going to do today? What are you going to do? And what are you going to do through me today? And I said, help me to see it and help me to perceive it. I'm telling you, when you do that, it says this. It says that darkness will cover the earth, but the Lord will arise over you. And his glory will be seen on you. Verse 3. The Gentiles shall come to your light. So when you begin understanding you're a son, you're a daughter of God, even though you mess up, you sin, you do stupid things, God's anointing, God's grace, God's plan is on your life. Jesus said you're the light of the world. Didn't he say that? Same thing Isaiah is saying. 
You are the light of the world. Just turn the ring to that. We need to change our thinking. Everybody agree with that? See, we have listened to ourselves and to the devil for too long. It's time that we start actually reading this book and believing what this book says. You're going to do great exploits. You're extraordinary people. You're the head, not the tail. And, and I, I just I want to have, have you encourage each other. It is, it is so great when people have the spirit of encouragement. Please encourage each other. Say, you can do this thing. You can do this thing. You're all called to do something. I, I see this gentleman, you're you're holding the children there? Yes. I'll, I'll tell you what. You're a great dad. That's not the Lord telling me you're, you're just a great dad. And um, I, I just see God calling you to a deeper place. I, I really do. And I think there's this desire in, in you to know God even in a deeper way. And, and I, I just see God like, Hello! Hello! And he, he's saying, okay, we've been hanging out for a long time. It's now time we really begin to have a personal relationship. I, I, just, I just see that. But, but you're, you're a great, great dad. You really are. I have decided that I'm going to be a fanatic. <laughs> Would you decide that with me? Could you abandon ordinary life and ordinary thinking? See, I'm called and you're called to live in the Spirit. And when you live in the Spirit, the supernatural is available to you. I'm just crazy enough to believe that I can walk in the supernatural. Will you join me? It's a wonderful club. It's a crazy club. And all are welcome. When you look at the, the miracles that Jesus did, the signs and wonders, I, I have a question. We read in the Gospel of John, it says, greater works shall you do. I got a problem. Why aren't we doing it? Are you able to ask yourself that? Why aren't we doing that? Do you know why we're not doing that? Because we're not believing what this book says. And we're not living what this book says. But you were called for greatness. You're called to change the world. You're called to be sons and daughters. And I, I can't wait to see what God's going to do through you. As, as individuals, but as a church. Because I, I am fully convinced that you're on the cusp of some amazing things. You believe you're on the cusp of some amazing things? Mm -hmm. Here's a warning. The devil knows you're on the cusp of amazing things. And he has schemes and plots to thwart what God wants to do here. You can't let him do that. The devil works through discouragement and division. Do not let the enemy divide you. So Father Jim, I thank you for this morning. Thank you. And uh, you mind if I pray? Please do. <laughs> Father, I'm looking at your people. I'm looking at your sons and your daughters. 
looking at all the plans you have for them. They're amazing plans. They're extraordinary plans. And I, I would pray, Father, that you would draw each of us closer to you this morning. And that you would encourage us and help us to understand our identity. Help us to understand the anointing we have. Help us to know that you have, you have plans for us. Before we even took our first breath, you have plans for us. And Lord, kind of in closing up, we want to thank you for your grace and mercy. We want to thank you that you don't remember our sins. We want to thank you that you're always for us and never against us. I bless the people of God sitting in this place that they can become everything you call and ordain them to be. Jesus, as we pray in your amazing name, Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Married, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified.